السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه العزيز بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون وقال أيضا يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا وقال يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما وبعد Indeed all praise and glory is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We praise him, we seek his aid and his forgiveness We believe in him and rely upon him We seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's protection and refuge against the evil of our own souls and against the evil of our impious deeds Whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides, none can misguide. And whomsoever is misguided, none can guide him except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we testify and we bear witness to the fact that there's no one worthy of worship except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is alone without any partner. And we also testify and bear witness to the fact that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the last messenger and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is perfect worshiper. My dear respected brothers and sisters, this is the first Friday of 2018 and I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He makes this year full of blessings and goodness for all of us, for our families, and for the Muslim Ummah. I wanted to take this opportunity and talk a little bit about goals, right? During this time, you see many people uh, making resolutions that for the year 2018, we want to do X, Y, Z. And there's nothing wrong with that per se. As long as we always have an ultimate goal in mind. And the ultimate goal needs to be the priority of our lives. As Muslims, we have to make sure that all of our goals, our resolutions, our aspirations align with the ultimate goal and the purpose of our creation. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned this very clearly in the Quran. 
in Surah Dariyat, right? Surah number 51, verse 56. Every Muslim, rather every person should be aware of this ayah because many people go throughout life trying to answer the questions of why am I here? Why have I been created? What's my purpose in this world? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us this very, very clearly where He said, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, I did not create the jinn and mankind except to worship me. Right? So our purpose of creation, the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us is to do the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And inshallah we'll talk about what that means in this khutbah. Right? Success in any field requires commitment, dedication, and sacrifice. Right? If a person wants to be an athlete, you see they're putting in extra amount of time. If a person wants to excel in medicine, in law, in education, in IT, right? They have to go above and beyond to make sure that they excel and they master their field. Similarly, if we want to fulfill our purpose of creation, this is not something that we do on a part-time basis. Well, I'm going to do everything else in my life and when I find time, I'm going to be a servant and slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No. If we want to be the best servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we must have commitments. We must have dedication. We must be willing to sacrifice certain things because this is the loftiest of goals, is to be a true servant and slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the challenges of this life is that the, 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 uh, one of the challenges of life is to stay committed to this ultimate goal. Sometimes shaitan, sometimes our passions, sometimes our desires, sometimes our friends, sometimes our family will take us away from this goal and encourage us to pursue short-term superficial goals which divert us from the ultimate goal which is the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The more we focus on this ultimate goal, which is the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then the more we'll find peace. The more we find ourselves having that compass, that anything that happens in my life, right, we will face challenges, we will face obstacles, we will face hardship. But when we have that situation, that compass, that this is our ultimate goal, this changes a person's perspective on life. This gives the person the ability to focus on the bigger picture. And when the person is able to maintain that focus, that commitment, that dedication, then they will have peace, comfort, and stability in life. One of the keys to having that ultimate goal constantly on our mind is to have the proper intention. To have the proper intention and to follow the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam in all aspects of our lives. Like, let's give an example. Like some people have, with the resolutions that people have, one person might have a resolution of losing weight, which is a good and noble uh, resolution. But if a person, from an Islamic perspective, has the resolution of losing weight because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does wants, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to be healthy. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam discouraged people from overeating that resolution and that intention will be blessed. If a person wants to uh, have the understanding that I want to, the resolution is that I want to treat my family better. But my intention behind that is that the reason I want to do this is because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask us how we treat members of our family then that intention and the resolution will be blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If as a student, my resolution is that I want to do better in school, right? A lot of times people have that intention, but their intention is just uh, they want to get good grades. But as Muslims, our intention and our resolution should be, I want to do well at school because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala demands that I do the best at whatever I can. And sometimes people, our, our objective gets skewed. Some people may say that I want to do the best at school, I want to get good grades. But we also have to follow the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam and do things honestly and with integrity and not cheat and do things in the proper way. So this is a change in our mindset that yes, we have short-term goals, 
But those short-term goals should not conflict. Rather, it should lead to the ultimate goal, which is the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We must understand that everything has been created for a purpose. Sometimes people go through life not pausing to reflect on the things that are going around, uh, things that are going on around them. Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَمَا خَلَقْنَا السَّمَاءَ وَالْأَرْضَ وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا بَاطِلًا ذَلِكَ وَنُّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, He has not created the heavens and the earth and whatever is in between them for no reason. Right? As, as just folly or some, for no reason, right? That is the perception of those that don't believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we believe Allah has created everything for a purpose. And those people that think that all of this is random, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they're not the same as those that believe in Allah, do good deeds, and have fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He makes us all among those that believe in Him, that work hard to do good deeds, and He gives us success in this dunya and the akhirah. In another ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, إِنَّ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَاخْتِلَافِ اللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ لَآيَاتٍ لِأُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ الَّذِينَ يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ قِيَامًا وَقُعُودًا وَعَلَى جُنُوبِهِمْ وَيَتَفَكَّرُونَ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا مَا خَلَقْتَ هَذَا بَاطِلًا Right? There are people who uh, reflect on the alternation of the night and the day. And in the alternation of the night and the day are signs for those that reflect. Those that remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every situation, whether they're lying down, whether they're sitting, whether they're standing, and they say, Oh Allah, you did not create this for no purpose, right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is above and beyond anything that is associated with Him. Even this weather that we're going through, right? We shouldn't just say, that, oh, it's cold. Yes, it is cold. But who has the ability? If we all gather together and try to increase the temperature, would we be able to do so? No, it shows us our limitations and it shows us the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His power. And it also gives us the ability to be appreciative that alhamdulillah, in spite of the weather being so cold, we're able to gather and we have comforts of heat which other people in other places of the world do not have. So it gives us the ability to be appreciative to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Muslims, we must be reflective and understand that we have a higher purpose which is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the scholars commented on this phenomenon. He said, when a person becomes heedless of the ultimate goal, the purpose of his existence and his creation, he becomes busy with other goals. This changes the nature of the person and brings them down from the lofty status and position Allah has honored him with. Look, this is something that sometimes we're afraid to talk about, but this is reality. As Muslims, we believe that Allah has chosen us. So we have a higher position and status because we recognize Allah, because we follow the Prophet ﷺ. And our integrity is through our Iman. As Muslims, we believe that we are the best Ummah that has become on this earth. Why? Because we command what is right. We forbid what is wrong. And we do that out of a belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if we forget this, then we bring ourselves down from that lofty position that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. And when we bring ourselves down by forgetting this ultimate goal, which is the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what happens then? This causes confusion and contradiction in the makeup of humans. The human is then dragged in two different directions the direction of the body and the direction of the soul. But Islam, the ultimate the religion Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen, shows us how to find that balance. Because when we talk about our spirituality in Islam, it's not that we abandon ourselves from the dunya, it's that we engage in the dunya with the principles taught to us by Allah and His Messenger. We have been created, as I mentioned, for the purpose of doing ibadah. And when we hear ibadah, many people, they think that ibadah is just the five pillars. And this is a wrong understanding. Ibadah is everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves and is pleased with, and staying away from those things that anger Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is displeased with. So yes, our salah, our zakah, our siyam, our hajj, 
these all come under ibadah. But so does truthfulness in speech, trustworthiness, kindness to parents and relatives, maintaining kind relationships, fulfilling pledges, enjoining the good and forbidding the evil, striving against oppression, right? Striving against injustice, being good to our neighbors, being good to the orphans, being good to the poor, being good to the animals, making dua, reciting Quran. These are all parts of ibadah. Going to extremes and neglecting one aspect at the expense of another is also prohibited. The Prophet ﷺ reprimanded some of the companions عنهم, who would fast all day and pray all night because they were neglecting the rights of themselves and their families. And we know the Prophet ﷺ showed us how to balance our lives. So if we want to do the ibadah in the best possible way, we need to give priority and preference to the following relationships. Number one, is our relationship between ourselves and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then, our relationship with our own soul. Our relationship with our family, our relatives, those that have special rights on us. Our relationships with the community and the society at large. Our relationship with the animals. Our relationship with the environment. All of these things we have guidance for in the Quran and the Sunnah. And this is what we talk about ibadah. If a person just focuses on the relationship between themselves and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, neglects their family, neglects their community, neglects their own self, then this is blameworthy and this is not praiseworthy. If a person only focuses on the environment, but neglects to pray the salawat, neglects the rights of the family, then this is not praiseworthy, this is blameworthy. One soul will only be purified when all of these relationships fall under the realm of the ultimate goal which is to follow the guidance found in the Quran and Sunnah. And we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He gives us all the ability to follow the Quran and Sunnah in all aspects of our lives and gives us peace in this dunya and Jannah in the hereafter. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين من كل ذم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. الحمد لله على فضله وإحسانه وأشكره على توفيق امتناني أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وبعد you know, during this khutbah we've been talking about the ultimate goal which is to worship Allah سبحانه وتعالى and we defined what worship means uh, now we'll talk a little bit through tonight I have remaining is how do we do that practically, right? Number one thing is to learn about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His names and His attributes. Um, scholars have said, whoever knows Allah's names and attributes and their meanings and believes in them will have more complete faith than the one who knows them just generally. Like if I say ar raqib you may know that this is a name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when you know that it means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching over a person, then this gives you confidence that I'm never truly alone in the sense that when I need help and support, Allah is there. Also, it gives you the understanding that if I feel like I can oppress my wife, my children, or neglect my duties and responsibilities, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always watching. And this elevates a person's character, their morals. And this is something that, you know, we are talking about worshiping Allah. Some people will ask, why Allah? So when we learn about Allah's names and attributes, then you really have that belief. Not just because your parents told you, not because you were just raised Muslim. You really have that belief and understanding that the only one that truly deserves all of our worship is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because He is perfect. And He has no deficiencies. And He has no faults, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, another way that we can incorporate Islam and understanding and a holistic is learning from the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. When we talk about the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, many times people approach it as a historical text. Right? They'll know that he was born in this year and then, uh, then his, who his father was, who his mother was, which is beneficial. But also we need to learn how did the Prophet ﷺ live his life? You know the ayah that I read, that the Prophet Sallallahu that Allah didn't, uh, the, in the alternation of the night and the day are signs for people that reflect. The Prophet Sallallahu used to read that when he used to wake up for tahajjud even before he got out of bed. 
And you see how his day started. What else did he recite when he How did he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam use the bathroom? How did he eat? All of these things can help us turn everyday actions into acts of ibadah. And that's by following the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And number three is focus on the fadl. Those things that are obligatory on you, right? Uh, prayer, being observant and punctual in your prayer, being good to your family, staying away from haram. If you try to fill, fill this void with other things which are not obligatory, you'll never find the peace that you're looking for. You may be able to mask it for a little bit, but that inner peace will come and that guilt that we have naturally as humans will come when we fulfill our responsibilities and do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to do. And if there's so many things that we can do. So where do we start? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and this is a hadith Qudsi, the most beloved things that a person can come closer to me is by doing that which I have made obligatory on them. So start with the fard, analyze. Fard is also doing what Allah wants you to do and staying away from Allah, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to stay away from. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He gives us understanding of our religion. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He gives us all inner and outer peace. And we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if we've shown any negligence, He forgives us and gives us the ability to follow the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in all aspects of our lives. And we also make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He eases the suffering of people all over the world. Ameen. قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتاب العزيز بعد عرض بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله ملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم اغفر المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر أعداءك أعداء الدين ربنا اغفر لنا ولإخواننا الذين سبقونا بالإيمان ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك رؤوف رحيم فاذكروا الله العظيم اذكركم ودعوه يستجب لكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تسنون أقيم الصلاة